Suicide, a seven letter word that carries the weight of the world. Use it in a sentence and more often than not, it changes someone's life. Unfortunately, suicide is a word not talked about enough and a verb used too often. Alone in the United States, there are over 100,000 deaths per suicide per year. This is a huge increase from what it was in the recent years. If you feel comfortable, please raise your hands if you have known of someone committing suicide and the numbers are just staggering. Suicide is an issue that is affecting the whole world. The Vail Valley had 61 suicides from 2018 to 2022. And last year, we unfortunately lost a brother, a friend to all, and a kind soul, Kellen Collins. This opened our generation's eyes. We realized that we really never know what someone is going through and that we need to be there for one another. Through this experience, we all grew and realized that mental health does truly matter. As a generation, we experienced the first real loss from most of us, and this made us empathetic with one another. Now, if you've ever personally experienced the loss of someone to suicide, please raise your hand. Take a second and notice that you are not alone. Remember when you heard the news, the shock, the questions, perhaps even the anger and the guilt. I know this feeling because I received the phone call. It was 2022. I was sitting in the Burger King drive-thru with my mom when all of a sudden our favorite song got interrupted by the ringing of the phone. It was her sister, my aunt. My mom picked up the phone and my aunt told us, my son just killed himself. There was no hello, there was no how are you doing, but rather just the blunt news. I was heartbroken. I was even angry at the thought of being left behind. How could someone do this to the, their family? It was such a selfish act. However, I have realized that the act of suicide is not an individual tragedy, but yet a ripple effect. Picture standing near a body of water, skipping rocks. You hit a rock and the first rock causes a visible impact. Then it sends out endless shock waves, proving how everyone is affected by a suicide in the community. No matter what, the impact affects you. Obviously, it varies based on relationship, closeness to the person, and past experiences, but a community ultimately feels a suicide. October 21st, 2022, a month after my cousin had killed himself. I was sitting in my room, endlessly scrolling on TikTok, as many teenagers do, when at 11.37, the phone rang. It was my aunt. I thought to myself, it can't be good if she's calling this late. So I nervously picked up the phone. She told me to pass the phone to my mom, and I knew this wasn't good. Just how there wasn't a hello before, there wasn't a hello now. My uncle killed himself one month after my cousin. I was heartbroken at the thought that two of the people I loved the most were gone within a month of each other. I was angry, confused, and even spiraled into a depression. I couldn't quite grapple with the thought that people could just leave us behind. But as I grew, I realized that in times like these, we need to trust our community and come together. But this ripple effect had now turned into one of what ifs and I should have. I should have been there to save them. I should have known and told them I loved them more. And even, I wish I could have prevented this. This left a hole in my soul. I was left with all these unanswerable questions that were existential and I had no way to get out of this. But I leaned on my community, which is what I urge you to do. In times of tragedy, we need to come together. We need to be supportive of one another and understand that everyone is going through something no matter what. It is said that over 67% of people deal with suicidal ideation in silence because they are too afraid to speak up. Someone might not directly speak up, but rather say something along the lines of, I just want the pain to stop. I don't know if I can go on, or even I'm a burden to everyone. It is very important that we take these sayings seriously because we could ultimately be saving someone's life. Some of the other warning signs include increased substance use, giving away treasured items, sleep pattern changes, and isolation, just to name a few. It is imperative that we take these 
warning signs very seriously. These warning signs are very important as they often indicate that someone is thinking about suicide. However, this is not always the case. So in the moment, you need to make sure that the person is actually thinking about suicide. So if you're comfortable enough with the person, you might directly ask them, hey, I'm worried about you because of these things. How are you doing? Are you thinking about ending your life? If they say yes, you need to take this very seriously. You need to ask them what their plan is, what their timeline is, and what they will use to end their life. Do not be judgmental, as being judgmental in this moment would cause a ripple effect of negative emotions for everyone. The person is opening up to you and confiding in you and trusting you, so you need to use the trust to get them help. So that leads me to my second step, encouraging them to reach out for help. When someone is dealing with this, you can't help them. You can't be the one to save their life. As much as we want to be, we are not professional therapists. So they need to reach out for professional help. 988 is a great hotline that can help them. In the moment, you need to stay with them until they get professional help, as leaving someone alone in this moment is not good. In the moment, you could distract them with something I like to call the 54321 game. Ask them five things they can see, four things they can hear, three things they can smell, two things they can touch, and one thing they can taste. Here, let's practice. Quietly, in your mind, please list five things you can see. Four things you can hear. Three things you can smell. Two things you can touch. And one thing you can taste. Now take a deep breath in and out. Let's draw a parallel to elementary school. Your best friend falls off the playground and is hurt. They break their arm. So what do you do? You go tell a trusted adult so you can ensure that they will be safe and get the help they need. So now your best friend is confiding in you that they are dealing with suicidal ideation. What do you do? Go get help. Oftentimes, people remain silent because they are afraid that telling a trusted adult about a friend that is thinking about suicide might ruin a friendship. But think of it this way. Would you rather potentially save your friend's life and lose the friendship or lose the friend forever? The truth is, just how you couldn't have fixed your friend's arm when they fell off the playground, you can't fix what they're going through now. They need professional help. In times of the, like these, we need to let ourselves grieve. We need to have grace for one another and for ourselves. A few coping mechanisms for grief include several forms of art, as well as talking it out with a professional. Therapy is very beneficial as scientifically proven that talking out your feelings helps work through them. As for my family and I, we are doing very well. My aunt's life has definitely been a roller coaster ride with a bunch of ups and a bunch of downs, but watching her take back her life has inspired me and made me grow in empathy as well as love and compassion. For my direct family, we now have a service dog named Simba. Simba, say hi. Okay. <laughs> Who helps us by giving us kisses as well as deep pressure therapy. He is a psychiatric service dog. So, my challenge to you is this. Let's break the silence surrounding suicide and have grace for one another. By doing this, we can help a community turn the ripple effect into one of compassion, caring, and healing. Thank you.